uh, bring in Robert uh, M. de Sogra, a co-founder and former president of the Titanic International Society, uh, joining us from New Jersey. Robert, thank you very much indeed for your time. Um, this debris field, I mean, it may be something, it may be nothing, uh, but certainly the US Coast Guard hasn't released too much information in the last couple of days. What, what would you read into its significance? Thank you for having me. I greatly appreciate it. And the, the debris field that we have known that surrounds the Titanic uh, spans many, many meters. And uh, hopefully what the remote operating vehicle identified is something that would be able to identify if this is the Ocean Gate uh, Titan uh, submersible. Uh, the United States Coast Guard is looking at the video that's coming up from the remote operating vehicle. And uh, once they evaluate that, they're going to be looking for uh, any type of clue, a visual marker that would identify this as the, uh, as the Titan, or if it's just part of the Titanic's debris field. So uh, we're, we're hoping for the best. Uh, we're hoping that it's part of the Titanic's debris field and, and not the submersible. But uh, all we can do is just wait until the, um, till the video is analyzed. Yeah, I mean, the, the U.S. Coast Guard say that, that it is still an active search and rescue operation rather than a, than a recovery operation. So until we hear different, we have to remain optimistic. But, I mean, essentially, at that depth, with the challenges that they are facing, is this the proverbial needle in a haystack they're looking for? Uh, we hope that they find it. I have a, uh, a Captain Pierre, uh, Henri Nargelet, uh, um, uh, PH, uh, 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 Paul Lapierre, uh, Paul Renangelé, uh, is a personal friend of mine, and and he's on board. And uh, you know, I'm concerned about his well-being as well as the well-being of the others. And uh, the technology that's on the surface that's being used to uh, find the submersible and is state of the art. And all we can do is just hope and pray that uh, they come up with some type of visual identifying, uh, visual identification of the debris to uh, let us know uh, what their fate was. Well, well absolutely, and, and our sympathies to you for your, your friend, uh, Mr. Najale. I mean, just when we think about how long they've been down there and, and the depleting oxygen and supplies, I suppose it is a desperate situation for them, almost unimaginable scenario. I, I can't imagine what it's like. I have friends of mine that, have, uh, that were part of dive expeditions back in the 1990s. Uh, they've described the situation in the uh, the French deep ocean submersible Nortil, which was actively involved in the artifact recovery expeditions going back in the mid 1990s, and um, you know they were they were clearly uh, state of the art back then. And uh, from what I'm hearing, there's uh, and what we've been hearing in other news media is that uh, safety precautions were uh, not as tight uh, as they could have been or should have been. Uh, which might have prevented this uh, tragedy from happening. So there's still a lot to learn from this, but we're, right now is that everybody's just hoping that uh, we can come to some type of closure uh, with this debris field discovery, and, uh, and then we can start to see what the investigations are to determine how this happened and whether or not you know, uh, we could well, avoid doing, having this uh, tragedy in the future. Well, well, exactly. And we keep our fingers crossed that it is a positive outcome. Robert, we thank you so much indeed for your time. Thank you for coming on the news hour.